really excited to kick off the first session of the morning and to introduce uh, two amazing people who are doing great things for the country, um, Bill Commode and, and Matthew Monaghan. So Bill I met uh, um, maybe six months or a year ago. Um, Bill is the CEO of the Next Foundation. Next Foundation is deploying $100 million worth of capital in New Zealand across the environment and education, specifically looking at transformative projects. Um, he has a background um, as in capital. He was the director of direct capital. Um, Matthew Monathan, really inspiring individual who I know you, a number of you in the room no, um, really such a pleasure and honour to meet Matthew a couple of years ago now and um, so inspiring as director of Inflection, also um, and CEO, founder of Inflection, um, director of Namaste Foundation and also co-founder of Kiwi Connect, so welcome you both to the stage. It's a privilege to be up here and get a chance to interview Bill for all of you. And I know we're going to have a lot of questions. So um, Bill and I had some chance to, uh, to prep some topics and try to give a high level frame of, of Next Foundation, but, um, but also very much want to invite the conversation. So get, get ready with questions as we, we go along. Um, so thanks for coming, Bill. Pleasure. Nice to be here, Matt. Thank you. Great. So maybe you can start off with the high level of who you are, what you're doing at Next Foundation, maybe a bit about the background. What I'm doing at Next Foundation, a lot of uh, learning a lot, but uh, you know, my uh, Next Foundation, you know, as, as Rebecca said, was uh, was launched last year with a gift from uh, from a very uh, um, uh, low profile uh, New Zealand couple called Neil and Annette Plowman, who were involved with a business called New Zealand Towel Services that many of you would know if you. Uh, uh, if you went to the toilet or the bathroom any time from about 10 years ago to uh, 100 years ago, then you probably used an NZTS towel. And uh, and um, Neil and Annette uh, had been very philanthropic before Next Foundation. They had been involved in a number of large-scale product projects like Rotorua Island, the restoration, the restoration of Abel Tasman National Park, and some educational initiatives like Teach First and uh, and University of Auckland. Uh, uh, fellowships and uh, they decided that they wanted to do their philanthropy in a more structured way and so formed Next Foundation last year and I've been uh, lucky enough and privileged enough to be the CEO of that business since uh, since July last year. Um, and uh, we've got an interest in making large scale wide impact uh, um, uh, grants in, in the areas of environment and education. So the 100 million that Rebecca and Matt have talked about is uh, is, a, is to be spent down. Um, my background, as um, uh, as um, Rebecca's alluded to, has been in investment. Really, this is my third career. My first career was really in foreign exchange dealing um, uh, in uh, in Wellington in the 80s. Uh, I followed that with um, uh, with 20 years with uh, Direct Capital, which is a, a, a private equity business. Or as pains to point out to Matt that. Uh, what it is what uh, those from Silicon Valley would call growth equity, not uh, not uh, what some people associate with private equity, and then uh, and then across to uh, Next Foundation last year, and uh, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. So, so one of the things in, in talking to you, Bill, coming from a business background, it's it's really interesting how Next Foundation is structured and and the type of thinking that you're being tasked to bring into philanthropy but before we dive into that I'm, I'm I'm wondering if you can speak to a bit about you know your relationship to this challenge we have globally uh, around environmental restoration around education um, what drew you to this work uh, what drew this this team configuration together and, and how do you think about its importance yeah what um it, you know, one of the things I've always believed about New Zealand is that uh, you know one of the great benefits of being a small country is that um, is that you can actually do things and and make things happen. And New Zealand's an easy an, an easy to do business and an easy to parent and an easy to do things place. 
So, uh, you know, Nick's Foundation was set up, um, and, and, and Nick's Foundation was set up really on the US philanthropic foundation model. So, while what it's doing is in some ways relatively uh, new in New Zealand, it's certainly not, common, not, not uncommon in the States. And those of you who are familiar with US philanthropic foundations, the names we know are names like Carnegie and Rockefeller and so on. You know, we're, we're thinking about things in a similar way. So I thought that bringing that, op that structure and that way of thinking to New Zealand was a real opportunity. Um, the chairman is, uh, is a guy, Chris Liddell, who'll be known to many of you from uh, New Zealand, who's in the States, has had quite a lot of exposure to the US philanthropic scene uh, over there over the last 10 or 15 years, has had a 35-year relationship with Neil and Annette Plowman, and a, and a very strong and trusting relationship, as have the other trustees. So they put together a structure uh, and an approach and a way of thinking which I, was, uh, which, which I thought was great. Um, I was fortunate enough that when I took with, when they asked me to talk about how I would think about things, I really talked about my experience, which was involved in what I'd call growth. I like the phrase growth equity that you've that you've got, Matt. But private private company investment, we called it, and um, I talked about that approach, uh, even though we were giving away uh, uh, or will be and will be giving away money, we're still looking for returns. They're just not financial returns, they're ecological and educational returns. And um, so the thinking is very similar and 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 that attracted me. And um, you know the two the two areas uh, from a personal point of view, education I've always been interested in. I come from a family that's been involved in that. I've got a wife who was a teacher, a sister who was a principal, a, a father who was a teacher's college lecturer. I've always been in and around it. I, I had the fortune to teach myself in one of my one of the careers I didn't mention, and um, and and the environment is something that I think every New Zealander just gets that it's part of who we are, and um, and it's critical to a successful future. So that was uh, that got me. And as a matter of scale, I mean, 100 million being deployed by Next Foundation, you know, relative to maybe some U.S.-based philanthropic organizations, is smaller uh, than some of the ones you've mentioned. But for New Zealand, this is, you know, right up there, if not the largest. It's diff um Yeah. Well, 100 million is a, is dramatically smaller than many of those foundations, but so is New Zealand, luckily. So, uh, you know, that's, um, and and I guess, you know, 100 million is, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot of money in one sense in a New Zealand context, we're not, but it's not, uh, there, there are other benefactors around giving significant gifts. The thing that's probably a little different with our approach is that we're not looking to put that 100 million in 100 different places, we're looking to put it in maybe a dozen. And, and make commitments that will be between three and 15 million for multi-year commitments. So the scale of the individual grants is probably at a philanthropic level uh, uh, relatively new for New Zealand. And um, so that, that minds us to look for things that we believe can have a national, uh, can have a national impact. Um, and um, and our focus is New Zealand, but we're mindful of the fact that there are things that if we can do them well in New Zealand, they can have an impact in, in offshore markets or in, in, a, in other countries or, or can, can still be lead, leading in a global way, uh, even though really our, our, our passion is about doing things for New Zealand. So I really want to dive into, I understand that Next Foundation, uh, opened it up for applications, and maybe you could tell us a bit about that process and, and the outcome there, and then also really want to get to this notion of uh, ecological return and education return. How are you thinking about taking this structured approach and applying it to, to this area? Okay, uh, yeah, okay, two, two questions here, really, Matt. So the first question is, yeah, uh, we set up um, a, a once a year process for applications for grants. Um, one of the one of the things that did attr also attract me about the job was that the chairman Chris Liddell, who's a t who's taken an active role in this as an engineer, so everything's got a process and a system. And um, part of the system, which I thought was a really good idea, was to run a once a year process rather than having it open for 365 days a year. And uh, so we but we did that. And and part of the thinking for Neil and Annette behind that was they'd been involved in projects, as I said, over the previous decade, really, but. 
In in the, the, one of the reasons they, that Next was created in the way it was and, and, and given some, um, some sort of public profile completely different to the way Neil and Annette had operated before uh, was, um, was because they wanted to find out what was out there in those two fields. So a lot of the process was, and we will run it again this year in May and June, is to find out, well, where are the areas in environment and education that somebody like us can, can get engaged, and then we can decide whether we think those are the uh, areas we want to get engaged in. So we ran that process. We ran a little sweepstake internally as to how many applications we might get. My guess was 80. Um, I was sort of probably in the lower middle of the pack, as, as I often am when it comes to guessing things like that. And, um, uh, and we ended up getting 287, which was a lot more than any of us uh, had expected. And, um, and I've got to say that, you know, I would have thought that 15% of them would have been kooks, and they weren't. Um, you know, there were, there were maybe five that were kooks. They were, you know, it's a privilege to... Um, to see all the good stuff that's going on in the country, and I'm moved by it. You know, it's been one of the, it's been one of the privileges of the job, and so um, we had to uh, we we looked. How did we look at those 287? Well, we were looking for things that we thought were transformational in the area that they were acting. We thought could be inspirational, and we thought were going to be that were being done in a business-like way. Because as you've said, Matt, we come from a business background, Neil and Annette come from a business background and, and they set up a board uh, to do this and the board appointed a CEO and that's a pretty business-like way to do things. And um, so uh, we were looking for, as, for things that had those sort of three aspects, transformational, inspirational and business-like at, at a very high level. Um, you know, that allowed us to get the 287 to probably a tenth of that reasonably quickly. Um, and then getting from, the, from those 30 uh, down to what ended up being four when we were that we announced uh, just before Christmas uh, that we expected, I expected anyway, would be two. Um, but we, got, we ended up being four because there were four that we thought uh, were, were met, our, met our criteria. Um, getting from, was, that was a lot more difficult job. Um, and more subjective. So, what are the, uh, well elements of subjectivity? But what are the things that we were looking for when we were sort of going at, the, at, at that stage? Um, as I said, we were looking for things for, that were transformational and and that would not otherwise happen. So, uh, you know, a lot of things. That if there were other funders, be they government, uh, um, corporate, philanthropic funders, then those that was not an area that we thought that, uh, that we wanted to go. We w we wanted to go to projects that we thought had a really clear definition of the problem, and understood what the problem was, and um, and. And and it needed to, and it needed to be a problem that we uh, we um, uh, were interested in. And there's an element of subjectivity in that. We're a family foundation. Um, one of the areas we've engaged in is predator management, predator free New Zealand. Um, we're there because we all think it's important, but we're there fundamentally too because Neil and I have a passion for it. So, you know, that's um, you know that's the that's there's a subjective element in that, and there's nothing to say that the areas that we choose are any better or worse than other areas of uh, that the philanthropists choose. So the, th the third thing that was important to us was good management team and particularly good leadership. So, you know, probably more leadership than good management team, uh, really. And we, th we think that's fundamental, uh, really, more than, more than structure. Um, we wanted them, because we, in a New Zealand context, we see that they are large-scale uh, grants, then we wanted them to have wide impact and to have the potential to, be wide imp to have that wide impact or national impact. And then we wanted them to be to have a plan uh, and a thought process, I guess, that would see them being sustainable because we don't see ourselves as a forever funder. Uh, and uh, if we've got to put a time frame on it, it's sort of a five-year time frame. So we want to be thinking and talking to projects that can see themselves getting to a sustainable financial and other model uh, in something like a five-year time frame. Um, so those are sort of the five characteristics that we applied it at, at a high level. And you, you talk about business like, and one of the things that really struck me about our conversation the other day is that, um, you know, in business, there's so much focus on competition. And the whole model is based on competition 
Whereas with this Predator Free project, maybe you can talk a bit about it, you're really thinking about collaboration and partnerships. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. I mean, one thing more, more at a personal level, Matt. But you know, one of the joys of the of the of the whole gig, from my point of view, is that when you're we're operating in commercial in the commercial area and stuff, IP and protection of IP and so on is always in your mind uh, and always in the discussion. The great thing about this gig is you're just giving it away. And um, if people come and ask us how we do things, then um, we, um, uh, you know, we tell them. And I've shared my board papers with all sorts of people, actually. And um, and uh, and that's, um, you know, that's not only incredibly freeing, but it's also an incredibly rewarding thing to be doing. So, predator free, which is one of the areas. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, we've um, we've partnered and and invested, and we call it. Uh, you know, we're making grants, but uh, we use the, the terminology that we use is strategic investment, um, because getting returns is why we're doing it, uh, and. And, in a, and we're involved with our projects on an ongoing basis, not at an operational level, but at a, at a governance level and at strategy and networks. So we, 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 it's not a give the money and uh, come back and, and uh, invite us to the drinks at the end sort of relationship. It's, a, it's an ongoing partnership with, uh, the, with the organisations that, uh, that we partner with and we look to bring things to them other than just the money. And, um, and so, you predator free New Zealand. So some of you, if you, uh, some of you may have been here on Saturday when Lou Sanson from Doc spoke about zero invasive predators, and uh, an initiative to um, to to bring new technologies and processes to how we manage mainland predator management. We can do it on the islands. We can make them predator free. The big challenge, the next challenge, and we'll be able to do it, is to is to is to take large chunks of the mainland and predator and Zip's got some technologies that can make a real difference in doing that. Um, so that's set up as a charitable trust with a corporate trustee, with a board, um, with a, a, a chief executive and a, and, a, and a small team of four or five. It's akin to a startup business that sort of film, the film cause of the world have got you know enormous experience in. I'm surprised that I'm back in that business, but it's easier when you don't have to get the money back at the end of it. And and uh, so and uh, yeah and um, it is and because the objectives with Zip are to um, uh, are very much to create processes and technologies uh, that we will be, that will be able to be used by all conservation projects in the country, and that's written into the constitution of the business that any of the process of the of the uh, any of the IP and so that's generated needs to be for the benefit of conservation in New Zealand. So I think about it as a for the environment structure, um, although it's actually it's a corporate trustee charitable charitable trust structure. So this notion of for the environment is it's so interesting because this is one of the things we're really passionate about is the, this blending of worlds between for-profit, non-profit, and how the rules are really changing. You're applying a business-like approach to non-profit. You're saying we don't need the money back, but we do need return. We are doing this as an investment in the environment. And I, I'm just curious if you can reflect on anything else you see in the ecosystem that can help us. If we have 300 amazing applications just out of the gate already and it's heartbreaking to see all of these amazing projects underfunded with doing good work for the world and for New Zealand. What can we do to bring more capital into the for the environment models that exist? Yeah, okay, what can we do? One, one little thing, I guess one thing we did when we saw them, um, which indirectly to your, to your question Matt is, you know, we, we became aware, and no surprise to any of you, there were a lot, and let's take conservation, there were, we got 50, 60 probably applications. A lot of them were doing their own thing in different parts of the country in a similar way. There's a lot of, you know, we're great at starting stuff up and, um, and, and you know, getting the connection and so on doesn't always happen. So one of the things, you know, when you have the privilege of seeing a number of them like that in one, at one time, you, it hits you. So we did some, we set up within our website a, a thing called Next Change and, and, and invited everybody who'd applied to put their application up. Um, a two-pager because uh, we just it was a two-pager and um, 
And, you know, probably uh, I think there's a, a little under 100 of them are up there uh, on the exchange. And we, that was one thing we did because we just thought by getting them up there so that people can actually see what's going on, that will create things. And, you know, you're, you're completely in the business of the, co of the commons. That's, your, that's been your business. Well, that was our little, uh, our little commons around, co around, let's say, conservation uh, projects. So, um, you know, we did that, we, and we hope that by doing that and by people seeing other stuff and by people sh and, and, and sharing other stuff, that, that, that will attract um, other, other philanthropists. We've had a number of approaches from, uh, from within New Zealand, uh, from, from people and, and, and some organisations who have got an interest in the philanthropic space. And from and from and from people in the states, and one fantastic Japanese uh, family who've, who've who are run who've been running a foundation for a number of years, interested in conservation, education, and the arts. And we have had approaches from them uh, just about how we're doing things. Our contribution to that is to share what we're doing, uh, and um, and to encourage them to uh, participate and to see. You know, one of the great benefits of New Zealand is, and its smallness, is you can operate with government here. Um, We've got government here at the table. They're open. They're looking for these opportunities, and if you walk down Lambton Quay, you'll meet most of the people that you want to meet. And and um, and we've worked very closely with Doc. So Lou, when uh, for those of you who are here, we're, um, Zip is a, is essentially a joint venture with Doc. But we're prior to that, we're involved in the restoration of Abel Tasman National Park, making that predator free. That's Doc land a project which is being funded by Next, run by Next, DOC are one of the uh, partners in it, but they are also a collaborator, they are also a contractor in it. And those sort of relationships and those sort of structures um, are a great opportunity. So I think, you know, it's, by, it's telling that story uh, um, is, one of the, is one of the reasons why, you know, and Chris was a driver in this really said, the U.S. The, you know, there's a lot we can learn from the U.S. philanthropic model here in this country, and it's not because they're more generous than us; they're just uh, a bit more developed in the in the models and um, and got more experience. And so, you know, that's our our sort of perspective is, you know, let's start. We haven't been talking about it yet, but we will start talking about it because you you got to wait till you've done something first. We haven't done anything much yet. So. Terrific. Uh, for anyone watching this, if, if you don't know, DOC is Department of Conservation. We had a great talk from Lou, uh, which will be available on the Kiwi Connect channel. Um, we really highly encourage anyone who didn't get to see that talk to check it out. I have a million more questions, Bill. This is really great. And just want to acknowledge just the, the terrific work you're doing. But we have so many uh, brilliant minds in the audience. So I'd love to pass the mic to, uh, to anyone who has questions or reflections. Hi, this is Simon Holdsworth. Um, do you, you talked about collaboration. Do you have a way to actually bring in other people to, to piggyback what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, and it's a good point. Thanks for raising it. Because yes, we very much we are uh, we want to do that. Uh, we would like to do that. So to give you an example of how that's happened uh, to date, um, uh, Zip the uh, the zero invasive predators started off, you know, in in a sense a joint venture between Next and uh, and Doc Department of Conservation. Um, we went and had a talk along the way to um, Gareth Morgan, uh, who's clearly interested in the same space and is running a project in Stewart Island. Uh, and now um, Gareth does a lot of other things other than support conservation, but one of the things he does do is support conservation. And so Gareth recognised that what Zip was doing could really help him in terms of Stewart Island. He has come in as a, as a, as a funder uh, of ZIP, and so has Sam. And the thing that's really uh, exciting uh, for us about Sam is that mo most of the work that Sam's done in the philanthropic space, and he's done some fantastic things, uh, has been offshore. And, um, and so uh, you know, getting him engaged in something like this is, is really interesting. Uh, and um, and if I could uh, answer that question in 48 hours, I'd be able to talk about uh, somebody else who's uh, getting in as a partnership. So we, yes, the answer is an emphatic yes. We we really do want to partner with people. Mm.
just in my experience with Next, I think one of the really transformational things that you're doing is um, firstly mapping the ecosystem of all of the potential partners and players and then amplifying that good work, um, being a facilitator of some of these strategic partners um, so that it's not all about Next and that we can have the catalytic impact at the pace and the scale that the country needs. Um, so I think that's a key element to the strategy and it's really um, exciting and, and humbling to see um, in the philanthropic space, um, in my experience, one of the one of the major challenges that we see is um, this need to have, you know, um, be out in front and names and lights, badges on things and next, uh, and the Plowmans with their very humble approach, I can see having a, that will enable um, some truly catalytic impact in New Zealand. Yeah. So, so further questions. I've got yeah, and and I'll add one point, Rebecca. You make a good point. You know, for, well, two points I'll add. We're not inventing anything here. We're just doing what uh, what organisations do in the in the rest of the world. And one of them in this regard, with relevance to the sharing uh, and collaborating, is that's here in New Zealand doing this uh, already and and really leading. And it is at Julian Robertson's Aotearoa Foundation. So Julian Robertson. And and um, and his New Zealand uh, philanthropic vehicle Aotearoa are really talking this book, doing exactly this in this way, and and you know we're incredibly lucky that uh, that Julian uh, and his and his late wife decided that this was the country that they were going to make this sort of thing work in. I'm curious um, now that you've started interacting with these different types of organisations, which classes of organizations or which types of organizations are ready to report, measure and report on returns and which types are not? And you know, what kind of help do they need? Yeah, in the, in the, in the non, in the not-for-profit space, yeah. Um, the, um, because it's no coincidence that Gareth and Sam Morgan, for example, who I mentioned, have come out of the commercial space, uh, and it's it's not a coincidence. Um, you know, if you're talking about the New Zealand philanthropic uh, scene, um, the you know the larger um, philanthropic um, foundations, uh, you know Todd, you know Todd Foundation, for example, um, and uh, have they they are very much in that space. They're looking to do that. I, you know, I the most. And and you know they they're thinking about things in that way. I think that you know the difference for from for us is more about the size of the grants that we're prepared to make, and I guess the fact that we're only talking we're we're narrowing our focus uh, more. So we're saying actually, well, if we're going to make twelve grants with a hundred million dollars, and I hope it'll be more in the end because I hope that we'll get more partners. Uh, but um, if we're going to do that, well, we can't go everywhere. We've got to be very very clear about where we want to go and why we want to go there. Um, so, um, you know, I, those larger players, I, th I think, are in that space. I think there's an awareness of it. It's, the issue, I think, more is probably um, is just how to, is is just um, expertise and how to do it. And you know, th it's the fact that the board of Next chose somebody who came from an investment background, a, a private company or a financial investment background, that's probably relatively new in New Zealand. Um, uh, um, a lot of people thought I was retiring. Um, I always knew I was going to a full-time job. I didn't just realise quite how full-time it was. And um, um, but uh, and I, I certainly um, see that you know I think there's an awareness. Um, there's probably just it's not not easy to, um, to not so easy to make it happen. About next um, and how we're able to kind of measure and tell the stories of the impact moving forward is um, as we you know co-create in this country the ability to um, frame the holistic social and environmental value that we're receiving and telling those stories, I think that will be a big pull for other partners to come in um, because people are good, they want to do good and they want to be able to demonstrate how they've done good in the full holistic sense of the word. So I can see that as a growing area and a really exciting one for you. So just a question over here. Oh, thanks. Um, just you mentioned with Zip that they're, you're treating them more like a venture, sort of an early stage venture rather than a kind of large scale sort of deployment of capital for a project. Is there a difference in how you're treating those two different kinds of philanthropic investment? As in if it's more of a 
an early stage venture, you'd assume more risk, you'd assume um, that it has to unfold in, in a different way and need different support, or are you looking at them as being kind of pretty much the same thing? Um, let me see if this answers your question. The, um, I, I th Zip has got all the characteristics of a startup business, and it, in fact, it, more, more for those of you, familiar, it's more of a spin out out of Doc. They've been running trials within Doc for the last couple of years, specifically a 40 hectare trial in the, in the, uh, with their processes in the Marlborough Sounds, and they're about to start, or are just starting a 400 hectare trial in the Marlborough Sounds. And so the people, that, the leader of, of Zip, the, the chief executive, has, has left Doc and joined Zip, as has, his, as has the number two, and they will, recruit, they will recruit two or three other people uh, to come and join them. So in that sense, it's got all the characteristics of a startup business and, and all the risks. And so is it high risk? Absolutely. There are no guarantees that what they are doing will work. Um, um, but they are they, they're assuming a role that is also about hopefully providing some coordination or collaboration in the area of development of predator-free tools f for the country. Um, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but in the area of education, we're much more likely to partner not with startups, but with organisations that have been operating for probably five years. Um, and that doesn't mean they're big, though. Um, and and one of the things we but but because education I mean it, it, you know the ecological uh, things bloody complex but education involves human beings so it's incredibly complex and and so getting involved in that space if something hasn't been operating for five years probably and and made and had the learnings that come with that it's we our 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 place is is probably going to be to help scale those that, that actually make a difference. And one of the things that we were made aware of early on in the piece was actually one of the, New Zealand's, and this will be no surprise to anybody, but New Zealand's not short of good educational initiatives. They don't make it past the three year mark, a lot of them, because every three years there's generally a, something dramatic hits them called an election. And um, and uh, and one of the things we were made aware of is that we can provide for those projects that we support the ability to ride through the electoral cycle. And um, and um, you know some of my advisory panel are uh, older than even me, and uh, and they've seen these cycles, and they talk about the fact that things come around every ten years and good initiatives. So. I think in education, I see we've got a bit of a different, you know, in environment, we probably will be more in the zip type thing. Rotorua Island, Abel Tasman, we started those projects. In education, a different place. I'm not sure if it answers your question. Okay, time for a couple more reflections. Sam, did you, hand was going up earlier. Thanks very much, Bill. I just wonder um, your other reflections on any gaps or areas that you're noticing or maybe were surprised that you didn't receive applications from or, or areas that other funders and not just next around the country or areas you would suggest that uh, New Zealanders explore more and particularly the international community here that we do explore. Any thoughts in broadly? Yeah, well, well, you know, Sam, when you say surprise, I was surprised at the quality of the applications. I would have... Um, uh, at the high quality of them, and um, you know, I was, um, you know, as I said, I would have thought 15% of them would have been kooks. That wasn't the case, but more than that, actually, the, you know, of the 287 that we got, 200 and something of them were fantastic projects, and um, and the people were thinking about them in a in a really good way, and um, and and you know, they ha they didn't all have a national potential because they weren't thinking about them that way, but they were well put together and you know that's the respect I took it's, you know it's a privilege to see that stuff so but if you talk about areas that um, uh, the areas um, of opportunity we got um, let me, let me answer it this way in the environment in the environment space we got about a, we got about half and half uh, you know of uh, of environment and education of the 140 odd in environment 60 of them were in the conservation space 20 or 30 of them were in sustainability uh, probably and then um, uh, and then the balance were in a range of other things the next biggest I think was rivers uh, where we got about 17 and um, 
and then there was a range of a range of things. I don't think there were any gaps um, that I'm aware of, but I, but I wasn't looking for them either. Um, uh, education is a much more. We've got a pie chart, and for those of you who are here tomorrow, if, uh, if, if I'm speaking tomorrow, the education pie chart where I show where they came come from is much more. There are 25 pieces of the pie in education, uh, and it's a reflective of how much more. Um, uh, um, what's the word? But you know, 25 pieces of the pie rather than six. Um, uh, um, uh, the, the education sector is so it covered it covered a wide range of stuff. The t the thing I, the other part the way I'd answer the question is we're going to choose an environment. I think we're going to choose three places to get engaged, and this may or may not be. It's probably not music to your ears, Sam. But the, but the um, you know predator making New Zealand predator free. We really that's that moves us. You know. Um, Rivers and and um, you know freshwater management. We just think it's such an important issue, and we've sort of got an opportunity to get involved in Tiaroa's. We got 17 initiatives. Tiaroa came with one that looked like a, a, it had a national approach. So we're working with them. And the third area, which is is environmental education, and to my mind, it's really a third leg for us overall. I'm thinking increasingly thinking of us as being about environment education and environmental education. Um, in in education, uh, I won't run into it now, but with these sort of four or five areas that I think we'll get engaged in. Uh, thanks, Q Build, for uh, sharing all of your uh, knowledge and, and experience from Next. I've got two questions for you. My, my first question is around, um, you talk about the importance of environment education, environmental education. Uh, could you explain to us just a little bit more why do you think that's important for us to focus on at this specific time? Um, and my next question, I'll ask you the next question after. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, why, yeah, why do we, why do we choose those? Yeah. Uh, you know, um, uh, you know, it, it, it's a combination. It's it's there's there's two elements to it. One element is is sort of the logical and the, if you like the business like answer, and the other one's the the, the passion answer. You know, the, um, so environment is you know in an in environment because the, our focus is on making a, a le you know a legacy of environmental and educational excellence for the benefit of future generations of New Zealanders. So if you start thinking about future generations of New Zealanders, I think you get to environment and education pretty quickly, really. I mean, uh, other th and, and it's not to say they're the complete answer, but we said, you know, we can't do it, we can't go everywhere. So um, environment is not only part of who New Zealanders are and, um, and you know, every New Zealanders, I think, got an, an, an in a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the environment, it's one of the one of the fortunes we have, but it's critical to the future of this com country at an economic level, at a at a at a status level, and at every level. So it's it it goes it goes to that. Education is about the future generations of New Zealanders. How do you want? It? And and we are fundamentally about transform transformation. That means change. That means new ways of doing things. That means education's the enabler for doing that. So they, those two things drive us. And um, in, and if you think about environment and those two issues of predator free and um, and rivers, in one sense, you know, my generation and the generation before me, we're the guys that have not bloody dealt, not, not done the job on those things. Um, so environmental education for us is about the 15-year-olds and the 8-year-olds and the children, and um, and ensuring they're in a position to, um, you know, to be able to actually a help address the issues that we're that we're doing, and b you know, deliver deliver better outcomes going forward. Mm -hmm. And one of the nice things about the environment is it regenerates. So it's actually not a it's not just about mm -hmm. stopping stuff. And, and my last question is: Do you see those as issues primarily that need to be focused by philanthropic and government organisations, or is there a role that the private sector can also uh, play? Yeah, well, nobody can do it by themselves. Um, the, the the so the philanthropic sector has got a has got a role to play and um, um, 
and and it can be in some places it can be a leadership role, but it's by no means uh, the only role. And zip, you know, I th zips my an answer to that. I think is um, you know it's a partnership between um, uh, between government uh, and the philanthropic sector. Um, uh, and individuals, and give it another 48 hours, and there might be corporates involved. And and so, the the um, you know those the answers, and you know Tiawaroa, which Rebecca's involved with, which is looking at rivers on a catchment by catchment basis. And somebody said to me, so who's responsible for the answers to the rivers? Uh, you know, who's where does who's going to make it happen? I said everybody. It's. Um, so, in, as a philanthropist, you've got a, you're in a privileged position of a not just not bringing being able to bring money to the table that helps you get to the table, but but what the privileged position is that you're not coming with any baggage or pre um, uh, or or history and or any particular angle and stating that you're here for the best possible outcome for this particular project is something that you can do and and provided you deliver on that it's a it's a it's a privileged role that can make a real difference in projects um, but it's it's not the complete answer it's a it's a great reminder bill and i appreciate the sentiment that you know we all have work to do in these areas and and it's a great invitation i think to members of the business community um, to, to really get involved in these areas. I'm wondering if there's any um, final reflections or anything that, that this group of people might be um, able to offer, any help you're looking for? Well, I'd, I'd make an observation. You know, one of the things I think is really exciting about this, uh, you know, what you have brought together over, you know, um, I mean, I know this week, but over, over years is, you know, and, uh, and I think on previous days you've had it, New Zealand's, um, New Zealand's a great laboratory for doing stuff. Um, it's um, you know the people are open-minded. They uh, they have to be outward-looking because there's no one else out out there that's close. You know, the closest place you can find is three hours and uh, three hours by flight. So, um, and it's an easy place to do business. So it's a um, you know it's a um, it's a great laboratory. Um, so connections with the U.S. and and other countries um, where stuff is happening um, that is completely relevant are can be incredibly powerful for both sides. Um, uh, incredibly powerful for New Zealand and New Zealanders because we don't have to invent that much. We don't have to invent stuff and um, and the and the size, the scope, and the connections that you know that you that. The, the group of people that you've assembled here can bring is just of incredible value. And New Zealand is, is it is a small town. And so, you know, making stuff happen is doable, uh, is doable here. And but, but connections with offshore groups who are, uh, who are looking down here um, is great. And I always used to say in business, when we were looking to sell our business to businesses, if we were to go, people in the States, I'd say, get them down here. Once you get them down here, you know, it's only one step out of LA and uh, and 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 once you get them down here you know they they tend to like it and um, and so you know the fact that you've got 40 or 50 uh, you know people down here who are looking to help I just think is a magnificent opportunity for us and um, and you know all power to you in terms of uh, in terms of making it happen so. uh, let's give it up for Bill thank you <laughs>